If you're like me, these days it's pretty hard to sit down and watch something on one of these streaming services without letting my awareness bring the darkness into the light. You see, there seems to be a growing number of people who are, from what I can gather, are quite gullible, even credulous. When they are presented with something, they can't wait to believe it. This is why they are easily seduced and manipulated. Now look, folks, a few videos ago, I pointed something out. I didn't really get into it, but something is afoot. I mentioned... GMO mosquitoes, chimeric gene splicing, and hybrids. And these entities really think that they're slick. And I guess they are, because apparently they can openly get people to get on board with the father of the lie. And when it comes to certain media, some of them will tune in knowing darn well what they are watching. Come on. I don't expect everyone to see what I see, but we have been exposed to this stuff far too long to sit there oblivious to what is happening. And so one of the most popular streaming services has done it again. And understand, folks, this is a very common theme for them. And it is very telling as to what type of thoughts go through the heads of the executives who run that platform. So now we have a new TV show out about, you've guessed it, hybrid children. They call him Sweet Tooth, but a few of you may know him by his other name, Sir Nunos. So here's the thing. Hybrid animal people has been in movies, cartoons, TV shows, books, comic books. It's of course not a brand new concept. I mean, the ancient Egyptians did it all the time. The old Native Americans, they wanted to be animals. Hey, I used to watch a show when I was a kid called Zubilee Zoo. As a kid, it was just entertaining, I guess can't really remember why I was into it and perhaps it was just the characters and the costuming because those are the only things I can really remember. Today, there is no way I would revisit that show. I'm afraid of what I might find out because I would probably look past the surface. So I looked through the first episode of this show, Sweet Tooth, and oh yeah, we are going to go through it. And the reason is because there is so much in this. There is so much ancient Celtic, Roman, Baphomet stuff in this show. There is no disputing the connections. And I will say this to those parents out there. If I were you, I wouldn't let my kids anywhere near this show. So, here we go. Now, Sweet Tooth was made in a lab. Yeah, I spoiled it. So pick another series to watch. Anyway, this is an eight episode series and I only needed to watch the first episode, although I know what happens. This was based on a graphic novel and the first thing you notice is Sweet Tooth looks like some zombie kid who is in a lot of pain because he's half deer. But of course, they have to make this version look cute. I see what they're doing. So it starts out with this guy and his wife's experiment named Gus. Gus is actually an old Irish Celtic name, the Marvelous One, or Great Kid, Cool Kid, I think it means something like that. On the surface, this show is nothing more than a dystopian future with a breakout in mutant children, which is pretty typical and nothing new. It's what's beneath the surface which is so disturbing. 
In this show, there is an outbreak. They don't really know how it is transmitted, but they nickname it the sick. I know, right? Anyway, at the same time, people start having hybrid babies. You've got alligator boy, bird baby, porcupine kid, Gus, who's Baphomet Jr. You know, Gus is also short for Angus. And here's something you can't make up. Angus, the sweet tooth alligator. So people want to know what came first. Did the hybrids cause the outbreak or did the outbreak cause the hybrids? Well, all hell breaks loose and they start hunting down hybrids. Quick early because they don't let the hybrids live long enough to learn how to talk so far only Gus lives long enough to learn how to talk now Gus has never seen the outside world him and his dad actually live inside this fenced in area which he is not allowed to travel outside of so when Gus turns seven lucky number seven he asks his dad to tell him about the outside world. So we get to this weird ritual scene where his dad gets him high somehow because out of nowhere this kid starts hallucinating as his dad tells him the story. The dad basically indoctrinates this kid into believing that all humans are bad and it's him against the world and he's special and this and that. Gus is Cernunos, Cern for short, the Celtic god of the forest. That's why this is set in a forest. This god is also known as Pan, the Greek god of the woods. You know, the flute playing dandy that prances around in the woods. That's this kid. Look at how they have him dressed with a woolly knitted sweater and his pants only go past his knees with black shoes making it look like he has hooved goat legs. It's right there in your face. In your face. Except Pan has curled horns like a ram and Cernunos has the horns of a buck. Now at this point, Gus is all alone. Why? Because his dad has died. He got the sick somehow and his pinky fingers started twitching oh yeah by the way that's how they know you got the sick when your pinky finger starts twitching also Gus and his dad had this thing where they would pinky swear now if you go looking into the pinky swear cult movement of today let's just say it's a pretty deep rabbit hole maybe for another discussion I didn't even want to bring it up here but you should be aware of these things. So, Gus is all alone, and basically he's living off of whatever his dad taught him before he died. But after some time, the kid gets fed up because he keeps failing at certain tasks. So he lights a fire, and the devil comes out of him. Guess what he does? The kid built these animal effigies like it's Burning Man, and gets pissed off and throws them into the fire. So now we have burning effigies in the first 30 minutes of the series already. They couldn't even wait. Later, the kid finds a buried strong box with a map his dad left behind. Inside was information that could lead him to a safe haven in Colorado. Gus runs into a couple of the hunters in this show which are quite significant, I'll tell you why in a moment. But they are really like poachers that hunt hybrids. The hunters actually bait this kid with candy bars. That's why they call him Sweet Tooth, among other reasons. And the kid is then rescued by a former football star called Jeopard. Jeopard gives him the name Sweet Tooth apparently because he saw what the hunters did. Jeopard gets this kid home and tells him that if he tries to go to Colorado alone, he'll get picked up quick, and then he leaves. 
And Gus sits there and he thinks about it and he decides to get up and catch up to Jeopard in this scene straight out of the secret life of Walter Mitty. The scene where he's skateboarding down the winding road. They even throw in that of monsters and men track. So he does catch up to the guy. Take me! And that was it. It's all I needed to see. Now for me, watching this would be all kinds of annoying, mainly because they keep throwing this kind of stuff in your face the whole time. The occult stuff. They make references to adrenochrome. Oh, you better believe it. They call it secret sauce. I mean, really? I hope you're paying attention to the terms being used here because these terms are also used outside of this TV show in the dark corners of a secret world. They even mention that the cure has to be made from hybrids harvested from the pineal gland. Yes, they go there. They have the purple symbolism with the blue blood and red blood mixture. Folks, they even have a scene where they have this kid wearing a crown. After I saw that, I was done. The crown on the head of the Baphomet. The seal of Satan. So they put all this stuff into one series by accident. It's deliberate and sick because this dark stuff is not pointed out or even mentioned to you. They get people, mostly kids, to watch this stuff and they don't know what they're watching. It's sneaky, diabolical, methodical. I hope this serves as an example of where we are right now and what they're are trying to put into our heads, into our kids' heads, in a sneaky way. And sometimes these spiritual elements do end up in films, but they are not necessarily put there by people. There is more madness to come. Episode 3 of The Experiment is up on woodwardentertainment.com and be sure to visit the Woodward Entertainment store. And until next time, folks, I don't know what else to tell you about this, but to stay awake, stay aware, stay safe, and I'll talk to you all soon.